very much. I, I, I just will have one question, and I'm going to go to Mr. Dow and, and, and Mr. Mr. Smith. I, I personally have been very disappointed in this administration's position, with, and I, I'm leading up to the question, with regard to human rights and religious freedom. They have failed uh, the Coptic uh, community in Egypt and the Baha'is in Egypt. They have failed, uh, uh, there are a number of Catholic bishops in jail in China, and they failed to advocate, they failed to advocate uh, for the Uyghurs who are going through a very difficult time in uh, China. Uh, they've been very weak in speaking out uh, with guys in, in Iran. Uh, has the American embassy and did the American ambassador come to the aid of your people under this circumstance? Did the American ambassador? I have said the American embassy should be an island of freedom, and the ambassador should be very aggressive, as it was during the Reagan administration and other administrations, whereby the, the embassy of the United States was viewed as a, an island of freedom, whereby the American ambassador would advocate for human rights and religious freedom, Republican and Democrat, it doesn't matter. The question is, what kind of response did the American ambassador help in this case. I see people in the audience shaking their head no, but can, no? Dr. Tan, do you want to, you, we can uh, just may give I your name for the record. Very quick statement yeah. here. Uh, Ambassador Michael Mihala did write back, characterizing this as a land dispute issue and also say that because this involves only Vietnamese citizens, therefore the U.S. Embassy couldn't do anything. Well, but and that is in writing. Could, could we see a copy, copy letter? You know, I think personally, if, if that is the case, and the American did not advocate for, I think they ought to fire the American ambassador. I think we should have an ambassador in Vietnam and every country who will advocate for the way it has always been in the past. The American Embassy has always been an island of freedom. They've always been advocates for human rights and religious freedom. And this commission, as Mr. Vandermeer testified, is deals with international human rights and religious freedom. So the very fact that the, that the American ambassador did not and the embassy did not, I think is very, very embarrassing. PC uh, money. What? He has PC money. Chairman. And Mr. Chairman, I want to uh, resonate uh, your disappointment with respect to uh, the Secretary's position on Vietnam's human rights and religious freedom issue. I believe that her statement uh, saying, and this I quote, the United States will continue to urge Vietnam to strengthen its commitment to human rights is simply lip service. Uh, I believe that the Secretary's statement uh, was said simply to appease uh, some members of Congress, like the members of the Tom Lentos Commission, but I believe that they do not intend to carry through uh, with the statement, and that if we were to look at uh, some of the news that have uh, been received uh, from, uh, from Southeast Asia, from uh, the Department of Defense, uh, as well as from uh, the Department of State. Uh, the, the increase in, in, in cooperation, the increase in, uh, in coordination uh, with respect to uh, defense issues uh, clearly shows that uh, the Secretary does not intend to force Vietnam to address the human rights and religious freedom issues before uh, implementing further cooperation. So again, uh, I want to reson uh, resonate uh, my disappointment uh, along with my dissatisfaction uh, with respect to the actions of the Secretary of State. Um, and my question, my first question goes to Mr. Meade. Could you further elaborate um, 
the linkage between property rights and religious freedom? Uh, property rights, uh, which is fees per se, are not necessarily religious, religious freedom, but if it involves uh, deterring people from their practice of faith uh, in religious ceremonies and religious functions, then it certainly is an issue of religious freedom. Now, the government of Vietnam contends that there is religious freedom in Vietnam in the sense that people are free to worship. Uh, in your opinion, what does religious freedom implies and what does not the these government uh, allow such freedom? I can't speak to specifics, but I think that the fact that religious rights go beyond religious freedom. Uh, the Commission has been concerned about religious freedom in Vietnam. We contend that it still should be a country of particular concern. Uh, we have looked at this situation, um, uh, as the other witnesses have testified today. Uh, certainly we would claim that would be an issue of religious freedom. The Commission met uh, last year with uh, a Catholic priest who was imprisoned because of his faith and his actions. So we would uh, contend that Vietnam um, has a long way to go in the aspect of religious freedom. Um, my next question for you would be the best approach for the U.S. to take to encourage the Vietnamese government to affirm its commitment to uh, religious freedom. We're going to advocate the redesignation of Vietnam as a country of particular concern. We think that uh, when they have that designation previously, uh, it didn't impede the growth of business or other, other um, cooperation between the United States and Vietnam. It was a useful tool for the uh, State Department and the administration to have as the Vietnam sought an and trade status. Uh, we believe that redesignating the country as a CPC would actually have um, benefits for Vietnam. Mr. Kumar? Yeah, uh, the best way to do is obviously the Congress should exert pressure through different channels. Uh, but uh, bilaterally, the, the relationship between US and Vietnam is improving. And there is no sign that uh, it's going to change. So the administration should have some benchmarks. Unless they have benchmarks, and review in between. Uh, Vietnamese are going to take all these statements uh, and just ignore it. For example, they should first make sure that all the prisoners who are in custody are released. Even Father Lee, he was not released. You know, he was released on condition. You know, he could be brought back any time, so he's not, he was not released at all. From Amnesty's point of view, he is still a prisoner, even though he is there going to hospital. Second is, whenever Secretary Clinton visits Vietnam, she should also meet with religious leaders and meet with the families here, those families, and go to Montagna, you know, in the hill, hill areas, sensitive areas. We have Vietnamese government will be reluctant to say no because they need U.S. Uh, relationship at this time. So the bottom line is whether the administration is ready to push the envelope. They should push the envelope as they have been pushing on Burma now. That's the strategy they have to adapt. This question is to Mr. Uh, Tai Nguyen or Mr. Uh, Wang Nguyen. Um, do you know the names uh, of um, any uh, companies, American companies, that are uh, invested in the properties of Gong Yao? Um, I have some document they say that's some group. Some that's group. name, yeah. Some group. Um, this is a company from uh, Ukraine. Ukraine, uh, Vietnamese, uh, uh, Ukraine, with, uh, Vietnamese, I think so, uh, in uh, Ukraine, they, they, uh, they, they run the business in the uh, Danang. 
any American companies besides this company? Uh, I don't know. But some people think maybe some company behind that. Stump? Yeah. Be, behind some group. But we, 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 we cannot find out right now. But we try. And uh, based on your knowledge, has any charges been brought um, against the, the person that uh, ordered the police uh, to uh, crack down on the villagers? Has there been any charges brought against those uh, police officials uh, who were involved in the torture? funeral. 